Yep, called it. Okay, well, what does everybody want? Thanks be to the Emperor that you're alive, your Lordship. We must be... Uh, we are most gratified by your return. And the crew is full of zeal to carry out any orders you may have. Before anything else, I will hear the account of what happened to the system's son. Uh, what is the current situation on board? Why did you not s send a shuttle to the planet for me? What is happening on the planet now? Do we have any hope of retaking the planet? Uh, what happened to the sun? Lord Captain, we saw a number of ships approaching the sun. Black cre creations of inhuman make. Amalgams of sharp angles and edges. They surrounded the star, star and then, my apologies, I struggle to find the words that can describe the terrible sight. The Xenos made the sun vanish into the void. Dra Drakai? Drakari? I'm an idiot. The interrogator closes his eye and grim Drakari. Okay, succeeded. Excellent. Uh, you see Abelard's expression change as if a shadow is sudden falling over him. He rubs his temple warily as if we <laughs> as if we did not have enough troubles on our hands already. The Xenos, enemies of humanity? He nods. A breed of the Aldari. The most cruel and devious of their kind. The design of their ships matches the description provided by the Vox Master. Who are the Aldari? Ancient and highly advanced alien race that once dominated the galaxy. Cool. Like all Xenos, the Drakari uh, are a blight on the face of the galaxy, but their technology su technologically superior in is indisputable. Superiority. Uh, they abhor and fear warp sorcery which is why they rely on creations of their twisted intellect. And many of those creatures are capable of things that may seem akin to sorcery to the unenlightened eye. The theft of the sun is one example of what they are capable of. Are the Xenos in league with Aurora cultists? Uh... We can roll out that possibility. The Drakari would never ally themselves with the arch enemy's worshippers. If I had to name one thing that humanity and Xenos have in common, it would be a shared loathing for warp corruption. He glances around. The situation calls for immediate action, Wilbur. We can continue this conversation later if you wish, but right now he gestures at the desk, teeming with tumultuous activity. I believe you should assume command. What's the current situation on the board? Why did you not send a shuttle? What's happening on the planet now? Is there any hope? Of uh, what's the current situation? Navigator Sanctorum is no longer empty, but the warp engine is still refusing to obey the engine seers. Without it, we can pr we cannot perform a warp jump. Pascal's voice buzzes anxiously from his vox. It may be angry, or perhaps it is lamenting the injuries it has suffered. I will immediately initiate per preparations for a prayer service. If the Omnissiah grants me comprehension, uh, I will appease the machine spirit of this vessel. What's happening on the planet now? Our auger operators are reporting numerous uprisings and other um, menace manifestations of arch enemy's powers at various locations on the planet based on the fragments of communication picked up on your vox operators by your vox operators there is practically no resistance being offered by the governor's forces millions of people are converting to the blasphemous final dawn cult in mass and assembling in prayer circles do we have any hope of retaking the planet I fear that Riker Minoris is lost. The situation is deteriorating by the minute. We must leave this system as soon as possible. However, there are still people on the planet who have not succumbed to heresy and who are worthy of rescue. Besides the small number of our, of our shuttles, we also have the shuttle salvaged from the spaceport. 
The dark eyes of the Sister of Battle flash. We must save as many as we can. This all happened for a reason. Saint Argenta, whose name I carry in re with reverence and trepidation, is famed for saving the people of the dying world through the power of prayer. God Emperor himself sent a star from the heavens that lifted the saint and her followers up into the sky, away from corruption and death. We must do as she did. Direct all our efforts to saving the people who at this moment look to the heavens in hope of salvation. The lives of peasants are of little value. Our prime objective is to save the holy relic, the uh, miraculous fusion reactor, and the electro priests who guard and tend to it. Abelard furrows his brow. Every moment we spend in proximity to the dying world, we are putting ourselves at risk. Your life, Lord Captain, is far more valuable than all of Regiminoris. The Von Valencius dynasty cannot be allowed to perish, and so lamenting, lamentable as it, though it is, we must rule out the idea of any evacuation. Heinrich's eyes, like two deep, dark pools, are resolutely fixed on you. The world is doomed and its inhabitants along with it. The disappearance of the star was the final nudge towards death, the final, the finale of the cult of the final dawn's plans. I once witnessed a similar event, a world that has surrendered to the servants of the arch enemy and permitted corruption to enter too deep. At this moment, millions of people are bowing down before those who promised them salvation and they are willing uh, willingly giving them over their souls to chaos, a sacrifice great enough to bring forth a demon world. Our only hope of stopping the pro this process is to retreat to a safe distance from the planet and conduct targeted bombing of the Electro Priest Monastery. If we blow up the reactor, the thermonuclear re reaction will follow. The world's oxygen will evaporate, killing off the entire biosphere. In doing this, we will save millions of souls from the fate far worse than death, and we will save Rikamnoris from becoming an outpost of the arch enemy. Whatever fate you choose for this world, I urge you make haste, Lord Captain. The planet is burning in raging flashes of crimson and purple, and I can see it from orbit. I can see it even from orbit. As do I see the storm is already upon us. With every moment we waste here, it grows ever more difficult and perilous to steer the ship through the warp's turbulent currents. I'm with the lady on this. Enough talking. We need to get out of here while we still can. Something? Decision? You were wounded by the corrupt, corrupted weapon, which led to a warp entity invading your mind. What? When did that happen? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Lurking in the depths of your consciousness bristles at the passing thought of saving people. The spike of horror you feel takes your breath away. It is as if you are planning to steal the prey of a mighty predator. The planet is already wrapped in a thread stretching out from the warp. It deserves to have a new master. Damn. Dogmatic. Uh, why can we not try to evacuate at least some of the people? Which of the planet's inhabitants can we evacuate? We will not waste our any time on this world. Pull back and begin preparation to translate the warp. Uh, why can we not try to evacuate at least some of the people? For the simple reason that transformation process, the transformation process will soon be irreversible and soul weapon against it useless the energy released by the bombardment could stroke the warps energies uh, stoke the worst energies i have never witnessed the aftermath of bombing a demon world before but there is enough evidence of such attempts for me to say with confidence that you do not want to see it which can we evacuate the nobles you rescued at the starport have given the coordinates of shelters where you can find surviving aristocrats. You decided to offer help to all who need it at the starport. Cool. And their families. As the sergeant's troops, uh, 
They will help control the crowds of frightened commoners and prevent the shuttles from being overloaded. Thanks to you, we have salvaged many shuttles from the starport that we can now use. Oh, uh, we have the pilots extract all the commoners who have not converted yet. The nobles deserve to be saved or the fusion reactor can be saved. Let's get the commoners. Any delay caused by loading and transporting to the ship will cost us precious time. Do not deceive yourself, Wilbur. If you indulge your vanity, you will doom billions to eternal torment at the hands of the arch enemy. Do not forget yourself, interrogator. Uh, one more objection from you and I shall forget all about the need to deliver you to football alive. I must do as I see fit. Perhaps I am acting foolishly in the Inquisition's eyes, but that is my decision to make. I think we will go that one. You detect a flicker of something beneath Heinrich's sanguine mask. Anger, bitterness, whatever it may be, it does not seep into the interrogator's uh, dis dispassionate voice. In that case, I consider it necessary to point out that the mark of the arch enemy could infiltrate the ship along with the rescued people, keeping that in mind for the future. Consider it done. It is likely our sh shuttles have capacity to evacuate more people. I guess we go for the tech priests. Consider it done. This will bring us to the limit of our capabilities. We have no more shuttles to use in the evacuation effort. Okay, the bridge is in an upheaval. The Technomats' prayers mixed together in a senseless, senseless cacophony of servitors working or work hastily to remove the hardened crust of sacred ugnance? Unguinance? I don't even know what that is. Uh, from the warp engine's components. In the middle of all this... Uh, to mount stands Pascal with a data slate clutched in his hands, seemingly disconnected from the flurry of activity around him. Uh, what's going on here? Why don't you assume control that certainly their contribution will speed things up? Pascal, this is now your ship and your temple, so start acting like <laughs> you blasted cog. Uh, if you do not bring the situation under control, we will all perish. Act swiftly. Crew, heed the word of the Magus. Pascal, I kindly request that you take charge of this mess. Thank you, your lordship. You are right. Pascal's voice changes as he addresses the tr crew. He now speaks with authority and resolve. Tech comrades, heed my instruction. The mayhem immediately subsides and the crew's actions fall into indiscernible logic. The Omnisaya servants start working in sync and the binaric clamor becomes a symphony of reports, which the mages coordinates like a skillful conductor. Do not act, <laughs> ever act like a spineless greenhorn in front of me again. Uh, now make this rebellious rum metal take, take us out of here. Admirally done, Pascal. Omnisaya guides us. The prayers of the text priest surrounding the Cognitor uh, almost drown out the sound of the bustling bridge behind you. Pascal, pouring intently over the data slate in his hand, extends a mechorandite uh, towards you. Please take your place at the Cognitor, Lord Captain. What are we doing? I studied the data and, uh, data and discovered, it discovered a machine node that was damaged as a result of the heretic's sabotage. The functioning of the warp sextant was tampered with, and the ship's spirit, aggravated by the violation of the right of operation, is now rejecting the calculations. I sought a way to rectify this error and have concluded that your participation is necessary to do so. Uh, the Cognitor system of the Temple of the Omnissiah are subordinate to the shell whose repository serves the machine we see before us. The machine created 
for your predecessor and one that uses biological signatures and of dynamic blood and its computations. The spirit should recognize the ship's master and submit its will. Should. Pascal speaks the final word with a slight tremor in his synthesized voice. Let's just do it. The huge machine in front of you is lit with dozens of vid screens and hundreds of lumens. The blinking lights and ending endless rush of symbols and digits on the screen on the green background make your eyes water and a vague sense of alarm simmers in the depths of your mind. A typical reaction of a layperson when confronted with the magnitude of the Omnissiah's creation. Among the num numerous controls, you see the mouth of, cy of a cyber gargoyle the same as the gate of the warrant chamber. Pascal's voice becomes imbued with imperious force. Servants of the machine god, heed my command. Acolytes, prepare the incense instruments uh, for the lethur liturgy of machine spirit proposition. Uh, senior, senior technomats, recite the prayer to generate a current data report. Operations will be marked with a <laughs> campnological protocol. Omnisiles rejoice. I must inform you that the purpose of safety, complete reassembly of the warp section, and updated of its data smith blessing are required. If it is not done, then the la at the launch of volume, then at launch the volume of aggregated. Uh, aggregate calculation errors could result in the destruction of the data crypts. Uh, but as we do not have 100 hours at our disposal, we must omit this procedure. Pascal looks down at the data slate in his hands. A minor deviation from the right of operation for the sake of appeasing the spirit. Listen, uh, can't you do all this without me? I'm no servant in the Omnisire. Uh... Deviating from the right of other saws dubious, especially coming from you. What must I do? Place your hand inside the throat of the Cognigar Guardian, the Cyber Gargoyle, uh, which has been assigned to guard the Fibrin data crypts. The di dynamic, oh, dynastic blood extract from your veins will serve as a key to the data core where the machine, machine spirit dwells. To it, we'll, we will offer our prayers so that we may bypass the protective protocol for defective connections and launch the warp sextant. Okay. Grows quieter. The laws of the Omnissiah, uh, no, no exception. And so the ritual, this ritual, I remain at your side to placate the wrathful machine spirit in those in whose abode you will be intruding. Follow my liturgies, Lord Captain, and may we receive his blessing. Do it. Metal jaw clamps down on your hand, breaking the delicate corporeal sheath and <laughs> releasing warm red liquid into its gullet. Uh, at the same moment, the image on the vid screen before you changes. Connecting, 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 success whatever any of that uh just uh, what does all that mean reach out and touch the keys on the instrument panel by my authority i revoke the invulnerability protocol of the warp engine let's do that one of the cognitive's big screens turn red pascal sees this and raises his hand signaling the rest of the tech priests then withdraws the connector from his sleeve and connects it to the machine. Servants of the Omnissiah make now the offering of cleansed data crypts to the machine spirit so that it may be filled with their true and calibrated data. May the Omnissiah have mercy on our souls. In meek solemnity, solemnity, uh, the acolytes offer their cleansed data crypts to the warp engine one after another, repeating prayers of uh, exhalation. After anointing the contacts with the sacred 
Ugnants. <laughs> Pascal inserts them in the cognitive slot. Uh, your head begins to spin from the holy censor's foul-smelling clouds of smoke and from the loss of blood that the Sarba gar gargoyle continues to drink from you. And the world swims before your eyes. Let this mechanism awaken in renewed purity. Pascal enters a sequence of command and raises his head, watching from the vid screens. Suddenly, he stops dead. No, his fingers fly over the command runes, entering command after command. His uh, mechorandites clicking their pincers pull one of the levers after another. The vid screen fills with strange symbols, completely incomprehensible to you, but clearly conveying something to the mages. Uh, say nothing and do not interfere. After a few seconds, one of the data crypts mounted on the cognitors begins to emit sparks. A moment later, another data crypt does the same. The next bursts into flames and gives a foul-smelling smoke. Around you, the Omnissiah's servants break off from their prayers, and someone's some one bursts into frantic pleading. Pascal mournfully grates out. The mass of errors in this warp sextant's calculations is destroying the data repositories. Uh, the offering did not appease the ship's spirit. The warp engine cannot be filled with the motive force. We are trapped. A moment later, the mage continues uncertainly. Perhaps an alternative Ryzen protocol or an emergency launch of the auxiliary coils. Tech Priest bends over the cognitor, but something in his pose and movements reveals his desperation. Um, while the other vid screens are filled with more and more strings of symbols, the monitor in front of you blinks and its a static engine and its static image changes. Pascal is too engrossed in his ritual to notice. A moment, if you will. He turns towards you, his flickering visor betrays his anxious state. Lord Captain I, he stops short when he sees the vid screen. Distorted transmissions from the data core, most likely the residual cognitive function of the built-in servitors. Omnissiah shielded us from machine ghosts. He returns to manipulating the cosmic command runes. Machine spirit, can you hear me? Uh, the cognitive service creak quietly in his joints, a sound of a, a sound that is drowned out by the binary hem hymns and the tapping of command runes. Ping requests injury rescue quarry. Rescue? Yes, Machine Spirit Rescue is Machine Spirit. This is the Lord Captain of the Vessel. Obey me and start the warp engine. Oh, hallowed Machine Spirit, in the name of the Omnissiah and the Emperor, reveal unto us the power you and guard us from this doom. Our doom. Uh, let's do that one. Pascal echoes your sentiments with a triumphant sound of binary Kim. Pascal's next vocalization goes unsynthesized as he sees the vid screens begin to stabilize one after another. The strings frenet frenetically gallop, galloping across the green background are replaced with stable images of or regularly updating status reports. Only one monitor remains inexplicably red. The tech priest's voice vox crackles in shock, but his report is clipped and Clinic, clinical as ever. Uh, registering. Warp sextant activated. Registering data stream stabilization. Registering zero data errors found. Reporting uh, the warp engine is ready for translation. After a pause, Pascal adds, uh, I am also reporting evidence indicating a uh, category three miracle fulfilling the criterion thou shalt witness the mechanism that toils in glorification of its function and the defiance of deactivation uh, Lord Captain Raver here the crew is almost finished carrying out all the orders you've given earlier, and I've just received confirmation from the engineering halls. 
I do not know uh, what you did, but the warp engine's up and raring to go. We're ready to begin translation of the warp, your lordship. Uh, I give the order to commence translation of the warp. Waiting for you to ascend to the captain's throne. May the emperor protect us. Uh-oh. God damn. Is that the planet or is that where the sun used to be? Damn, maybe I should have blown it up. <laughs> well, shit. Oh, well. Let's get the fuck out of here. Please and thank you. Oh, what's happening now? Oh, okay. They're like shielding it. Okay. Oh, new graphics. Get that mouse out of the way. Very cool. The Von Valencia's flagship made its way out of the doomed star system. As the void shift plunged deeper into the Corona's expanse, the rogue trader's subjects bid a formal farewell to the late head of the dynasty, Theodora Von Valencius. Having paid their last respects, the crew gathered their strength and braced themselves for whatever was to come next. That's a sick ass funeral. <laughs> God damn. Completed chapter one. Sick as fuck. Stolen star. What's up, crew? Where's, uh, who am I missing here? Cassia's missing. Lord Captain, allow me to report the journey through the warp is coming to an end. Lady Navigator Orcelios informs me that uh, we have reached the point where we can translate to real space in the Fividaris system. Furibundus. <laughs> Big Chungus system. The Lady Navigator and her pilots are awaiting your permission to begin the process. Forgot where my mouse was. Uh, the Big Chungus system is home to Footfall, the only Imperium outpost with a functioning wharf in the Coronix Expanse. The tech priests are beginning uh, are begging you to have mercy on the machines worn down by the warp and allow your servants of the Omnissiah to inspect and heal the void ship wounds in the dock. The prayers and rituals will take some time, which our astropathic choir? What is astropathic? A powerful sanctioned psyker who can send and receive messages through space using telepathic abilities. Interesting. Uh, will use to establish a communication with the prime worlds of your protectorate. Daragonus, Janus, and Kive, Kiva Gamma. Master Zachary Wise uh, has recovered an invitation previously adrift in the Immaterium. The Liege of Football, uh, Football, <laughs> Football has humbly requested an audience with the rogue trader of the Von Valencia's dynasty, according to the Master Zachary. Uh, the message was tinted with shades of pleading. I quote, apparently the liege is anxious to meet as soon as possible. Okay, footfall. The place where filth and sanctity go hand in hand. Uh, Reverend Harmonious Dol Doloroso will most likely expect a visit from me. I imagine he will be interested in talking with you as well, Wilbur. I will be leaving your void ship when we arrive on Footfall, Wilbur. Once that is done, 
Consider the Lord Inquisitor's task complete. Your Lordship, young Evine Winterscale, has asked me to convey his gratitude for your hospitality and for saving him from certain death. Not wishing to outstay his welcome, he plans to disembark at footfall. Uh, Lord Ivan Evane uh, swears he will not forget his debt to you. I hereby inform the rogue trader that during his uh, comprehensive system inspection right, this unit discovered data clusters within the captain's cognitor that are concealed from prying eyes by means of personal cipher and a sacrament of author algorithmic author authorization. Uh, well, Wilbur Von Valicius has been added to the access list and assigned the identifier Keeper 2. The unit can access the data from the captain's cognitor provided that he, he possesses the decryption key. You detect a hint of something resembling curiosity from Pascal's mechanical voice. Okay. Are you leaving us, Heinrich? Uh, the arrangement between the Lord Inquisitor and your predecessor was that I be transported to the footfall and no further. I dare not take advantage of your generosity and patience any more than I already have, Wilbur. I hope we meet again. True servants of the Emperor are always welcome aboard my ship. Uh, you are a skilled fighter. I could use people like you. What do you say we extend your stay in my retinue? Finally, my beloved... <laughs> Benevolence and patience are about to run out. Uh, you're a really good fighter. Can you stay? Thank you for the offer, but I must decline. I'm afraid my duty to the Golden Throne comes before everything else. Argenta, who is the man you wish to speak with? Uh, he is the head of Darusian, Darusian mission on Footfall and one of the most prominent clergymen in the sector. Paying him a visit is good is a good thing for any loyal servant of the Emperor to do. I assisted his mission before I joined Lady Theodora on her voyage. I need his blessing to accompany the new rogue trader of the Von Valencius dynasty. If you wish to have me aboard your void ship, I request that we meet with Reverend Harmonious. Uh, Vidges, did you tell me about this? Uh, tell me about the system we're arriving in. Uh, Big Chungus is valuable due to its close proximity to the Maw, the gateway of the Imperium. The system is mostly known for footfall, the base, main base for merchants, privateers, and rogue traders traversing the Corona's expanse. Additionally, the star itself is orbited around the Adeptus Mechanicus station, which is off limits to outsiders. Alter Templum Calexus X-17. Uh, I had the honor of tending to its shrine for the f few thousand cycles. I suggest you abstain from visiting it as most tech comrades at the station are engaged in uh, meditative calculations that should not be interrupted. Uh, what do I need to know about footfall? Is the largest port and trading capital of the Coronix Expanse. It has a dockyard that will allow us to inspect and repair the void ship and boost, boast its own uh, astropathic choir. The Coronix Expanse communications network. Not to mention private hangouts, hideouts, smuggler caches, and forts belonging to a dozen gangs, groups, and factions. And the Coronix Expanse, the Imperium, relies on this as its outpost, the fringes of humanity's domain rarely resemble the central worlds. Uh, but so long as footfall serves the God Emperor in so far as it can, it will be considered a, a citadel to the Imperium. Although I have heard that its tithes, its sins are underwhelming to say the least. Due to football's remoteness, it has developed its own rules and customs. Many of the goods that can be procured there would be considered heresy in the heart of the Imperium, enough to warrant summary execution. Moreover, footfall is the domain of the rogue traders. 
who transcend certain imperial laws by virtue of the warrants they bear. It's just a brief stop. What's next? As soon as we saw the issues plaguing the ship and established contact with the key worlds of your protectorate, uh, the time will come for your Magne Osario Assessio the official ceremony of donning the mantle of the rogue trader. Oh, I didn't know I wasn't. Uh, it is mostly formality at this point. You already possess all the privilege granted by the warrant. And yet it is a major milestone in your personal history. The moment your name graces the list of heads of the Von Valencius dynasty. We are all looking forward to that day, Lord Captain. Abelard, do you know anything about the Liege of Footfall? Vladium? Takara. Tokara? Is a particular young man. Uh, considering your upcoming conversation, a baptism of fire in Footfall's political arena. Such things are not spoken out loud, but Liege Takara is a pointy of the Pals Balikin mission and the largest robber bearer crime syndicate of the Calaxis sector. Uh, they specialize in the cold trade, the buying and selling of all kinds of Xeno rubbish. Cool. Footfall is previously run by the siege or the leash uh, who did business with several criminal factions at once but he's suffered an accident the reins of power were picked up by uh, Takara whose appointment benefits not only the people the syndicate but also their most powerful ally in the chronic expanse low rogue trader winner scale uh, he's a slippery yet very cautious fellow. He does not usually beat around the bush and does not play mind games. Perhaps more importantly, he is no fool. Fools do not rise this high in the hierarchy, syndicate hierarchy. Uh, keep all that in mind. You are the rogue trader. You stand above him in status and wield considerable power. Having said that, history is seen cases where the syndicate barons cross swords with the rogue trader and emerge victorious do not forget that and remain vigilant the syndicate vile tech thieves his vox barks out the last word like a profanity uh, why does the liege want to see me so badly not you personally he wishes to meet with the rogue trader of the von valencius dynasty takara does not know that lady theodore's death about her death and simply seeking an audience with the powers that be. My gut is telling me that something must be very wrong on Footfall for the astropath managed to read such strong emotions and such an annoyed anodyne message. We have no information, Lord Captain. The broadcast from Football uh, Pasket Choir was only missive was the only missive Master Zachary has received lately. Tell the Lady Navigator I give her leave to make the translation from the warp into real space. Okay. It just begins in issuing instructions. The massive ship appears to change with her every word. The bridge is set in motion as hundreds of people start to prepare for the shift into real space and measured chains, chanting, measured chanting fills the corridors to safeguard the vessel and its crew. Turns to you. Uh, one more thing, Lord Captain. No one in the station knows that Lady Thor about Th Lady Theodore's demise and you inheriting the title. Uh, Liege Takara will be informed it is required so you can dock, use the dock, and besides, he is expecting a personal audience with the rogue trader. He will not meet with an unknown person of unclear standing. However, there is still a matter of announcing your arrival. You can either arrive on the station with the proper pomp and ceremony or choose to visit incognito. Ooh. Tell me in detail how these choices benefit me. 
According to Footfall's unwritten, unwritten laws, rogue traders enjoy spe special privileges that exceed even the power of the liege. However, they must may choose not to ex exercise those privileges in certain situations. Arriving incognito will give you more room for maneuver, while an unofficial un visit will allow you to directly intervene in local affairs. I shall explain if you do not mind. As per the unwritten rule, every rogue trader arriving in the station has a right to veto any of the Legion's decisions. But there is a catch. The Coronas Expanse is home to several influential rogue trader dynasties. The fo And football is where these inter interests intersect. Of course, that does not prevent certain persons, namely uh, Caglios Winterscale, uh, from suddenly pulling the strings on footfall if you as the new rogue trader start your career with an official landing and a parade in your honor the other dynasties may see this gesture as in the newcomer challenging their sphere of influence i do not see that as a bad thing necessarily old man winter scale may take slight offense uh chorda will put on her guard <laughs> but you will have just risen to prominence and most people in the Corona suspense may not even heard about Leothor Lady Theodore's departure yet. It must be made clear that the banner of the Von Valencia soars as high as ever. If I may, I would recommend advising arriving incognito. You will have plenty of opportunities to savor the sweetness and the burden of power. But right now is the last time you can take refuge in obscurity. This way, your arrival will not draw too much attention and the people will f treat you as a person and not almighty sovereign anointed by the emperor. It could turn some situations to your advantage. Ooh, shit. This is a hard choice. I think Wilbur, being the man that he is, would go with all of the pomp. I've decided to tell the liege I will arrive officially as the rogue traitor. It will be done, Lord Captain. Vigidus, Vigidus bows again. With your gracious permission, I will return to my duties. Oh my god. Holy shit. I have been recording for way too long. My throat is fucking killing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll do it when fucking reading for two hours or whatever. Uh, let us end it there. I might split this up into two episodes. I don't know yet. We'll see how things go. But yeah, holy hell. We destroyed that guy. Didn't even I didn't even think we could. And then we rescued everyone we could, got the fuck out of there, and now we're heading to Footfall, man. The place where they've been telling us to go this entire time. And we'll discover it next time. I'll see you in the next one.